I can remember spending a lot of time doing this. Hey folks, That Fix It Guy here, and I haven't done a tool review in a little while. Today, we're gonna talk about this ratcheting style PVC, other types of plastic pipe and hose cutter, right? One hand ratcheting action. This is a must for plumbers and for DIYers alike. I feel like if you're a homeowner, you're gonna want one of these. So come along, let's get to fix it. So this is the ratcheting cutter by Raptor, okay? Price, this is a little over 20 bucks. I bought it at Ferguson. You know, it's crazy. I seen this on Amazon and they were saying that $80 from an aftermarket seller, don't spend that. There's so many of these style of cutters at a price point of around 20 bucks. And the reason why I went with this is because the rigid one was like 90 all right, and I really wasn't trying to spend it. I don't use this style of cutter enough to justify buying a $90 tool. All right, but 20 bucks, this worked out really well. This is actually a heavy duty cast aluminum ratchet cutter, right? Meaning that most of this stuff is actually cast aluminum. And it even says that the blade is cast aluminum. So I don't know how well that's going to hold up over time, but I've had to use this probably 10, 15 times at this point, and it's worked out really well, right? It's pretty easy. You can actually get a rechangeable blade. I feel like on most of them, you'll be able to change the blade out. A couple nice things about this, right? The, the ratcheting mechanism, like say that's up that high, the way that ratchets right there, that actually just helps, um with the force needed to make this cut, right? So you're able to do this single-handed for the most part. You get into bigger stuff, you might have to double-hand it, right? If you're gonna end up cutting inch and a quarter, which is, this is inch and a quarter PVC, and you're cutting this, you're gonna maybe wanna do two hands. Um, this cuts most type of PVC, CPVC, PEX, uh, polyethylene, and rubber hose, right? It's gonna cut through rubber hose like butter honestly um it cuts pvc and c pvc up to a quarter inch and then pecs and poly and most type of hose cuts it up to inch and a half right that's pretty good the handle and everything actually it says it has a corrosion free finish so so far so good I, and i really i really like this thing it's worked out really well okay so if you're asking yourself why would i want one of these well let me tell you it's better than taking a hacksaw and trying to cut some kind of three quarter inch plastic pipe, right? You're sitting here, you, you can do this, bump your camera. It's gonna take a while to get through that, right? But you get through there, check this out. You got all these burrs, you got all this stuff. You got all that debris now inside of your pipe. If you can't get all that stuff out of there, it's going to end up clogging your shower head. It's going to clog your faucets. It's going to clog your sprinkler system, right? And you have to clean all this out. You've got to make sure that you hook all that up. But if you're talking about using a cutter like this and you're making this cut, well, look at that cut now, right? So you're not going to have none of that. It's actually smooth. You don't actually even have to clean that out. You don't have to chamfer that. You don't have to deburr it. You don't have to do nothing. And you're able to hook that right up in there. Okay. All right. And so this other style of cutter, like this one right here, you guys have seen me use this a lot. Well, it works great on this thinner type pipe, but you try to start cutting this thicker type PVC or CPVC with this kind of manual cutter, well, it's really hard to go and it just, it doesn't work out so well. And that's one of the reasons why I ended up buying this because I was installing some inch and a quarter pipe. You guys see me do that on my friend's frozen water line a little while back, right? And that's why I bought these bad boys and it worked out awesome. So what will it cut? All right, well, we'll start off with 
probably one of the biggest things on the market these days, PEX pipe, right? This, it's a nice, it's nice to have, especially on bigger PEX. I mean, this is just half inch, right? But you still kind of always want to give it a little bit of a twist, in my opinion, while you're cutting, but it just cuts it smooth and clean. Flexible PVC, or, you know, it's just a little bit more bendy. Almost like hose-ish type stuff. I mean, a little bit thicker than hose though, but I mean, check it out. Chop it right off. CPVC, it's not really installed that much anymore, but it actually is used a lot for repairs or different things like that. So this stuff is a little bit thicker and it's nice to have this ratcheting style cutter for it, right? So when you're cutting, it just makes it a little bit more of a breeze. And this is inch and a quarter PVC, right? This is pretty big. And I mean, you could still do this one-handed. It's kind of crazy. A little hard one-handed, but you can still make it happen. Smaller pipe, you don't have this much of an issue. This is actually the max size for this thing in PVC. But you can see, look at that. It just makes nice clean cuts. So it's also nice to have out in your yard when you're replacing sprinkler heads, right? You can get on this little poly pipe here and it just makes it super easy to cut off, put something new on. Okay, so to change this blade, we're gonna have to remove this screw and move this screw. You're able to grab this whole thing, undo the locking mechanism on the bottom. This whole thing's gonna pop out. Okay. So be sure to watch the way that this spring popped out of there, right? It sits right on here and it's actually gonna secure right up on the back side of this when it all goes back together. And it can be a little bit tricky. But now that you got this whole thing out, come over to this side and you see that little hole right there. You're able to bring that whole thing right out there. And this actually comes in the pack. This is what you're gonna be replacing, this whole mechanism. I bet we never buy a replacement blade for ours, actually. I'm just gonna to try to sharpen mine up and see what it does, how well it cleans up the next time it dulls. But I just wanted to show you how to take this out and put it back in. All right, so new blade, pop in. And a lot of these are gonna be different. Some of these, like the more expensive ones, it's just gonna be one bolt that you pop out and then pop back in. And we'll get that back in there. Get that on there. Yeah. So the easiest way to do this is going to be to take this, put it underneath that spring. So you see that spring that's right there? Take this, put it underneath that spring. You're gonna get that right there and you're gonna have this like right over that hole, okay? This spring, the one that you took out, you're going to wanna make sure that this side right here is facing down because it's gonna catch the bottom of this thing and you wanna get that up underneath there, back where it needs to go. That should be in there. Okay, now it's in there. All right, let's just get the bolt back on here just a little bit. And so this piece was up in there. You just gotta get that down and get it to clip right underneath that ratcheting part. And so now you're back up and running. I can tell you the blade replacement on this is not the easiest, right? There's going to be ones that are same price point and going to be a lot easier to change the blade than this bad boy. Like this, it just took a little bit longer than what you would actually want it to, in my opinion. All right. So there we go. Now we're back to ratcheting. We're all hooked up there and put back together. The blade replacement is a little bit hard on this. I don't know 
if I would really go with this if you had to, right? As far as recommendation, there's a lot easier blade replacements out there, right? This has been a good product so far though, and I do like it. If anybody out there uses these particular cutters, like let me know. Um, so this bad boy is a practical little tool to have around your house, right? I'll put a link in the description box below for one that I find. I've reached out to a couple companies and asked them if they could send me one so I could do a comparison and a tool review. So we'll see. But there's some good reviewed stuff on Amazon for right around the same price point. Or you could go to Ferguson and try to pick one up locally. I really hope this video helped. I hope that you like what you saw. If you guys could please subscribe, click that like button. We'd love to have you keep coming back. Thank you very much and we'll see you again real soon.